Good morning and welcome to worship here at Ascension. It's good to be with you today. Uh, I want to let you know who's here uh, with us. Uh, I'm Pastor Daniel Smith. Pastor Dan Holt is here and will be preaching with us, or will be preaching this morning. Uh, Megan Miller will be leading us in song, and Teresa Allen is on the organ. This is our last week in a series on the prodigal son. Beginning next week, we'll be doing a five-week series on the book of Job. And then after that, we'll be starting um, a short series on, called Ask a Pastor. So if there's a topic or a question that you'd love to hear a sermon on, um, now is the time to let us know. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, the description has a link to where you can submit those questions, um, or it's in your weekly What's Up email. We'll also be doing a hymn sing later in August, and so I encourage you to submit your hymns for that as well. Uh, we have a vacation Bible school coming up at the end of this month, the last week of this month, July 27 to 30. And this is going to be a drive-in VBS, so we'll be doing it safely with so social distancing and all of that. And it should also be a lot of fun, so I encourage you to check that out and register for it. There's more information on our website. I want to thank you all for your support of the mission and ministries of Ascension. Um, of course, we can't do an offering during worship when we're doing it online, um, but many of you have given either through the internet or by email or by mailing us a check, and so I appreciate that ongoing support. I want to encourage you to set your space for this worship service. Light a candle, put out a cross, and maybe grab your Bible and have those ready. You can print the bulletin if you, if you need to. Um, and, uh, and also have your communion ready, of course. We will be celebrating communion later in the service as well. I think that does it for our announcements this morning. Let us quiet our hearts with a call to worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come, we come to, to you for healing, healing and life. life. We, we confess, confess to you our sins, which hurt others, and grieve you, and hinder your dreams for creation. Our lives bear the scars of sin, so we bring them to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Saved by grace through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, God's love has been poured into our hearts. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. Let us join together in our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people, peace to God's people, peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and peace. 
God's people, peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Peace to God's people, peace to God's people on earth. So I'd ask you to join with me in the prayer of the day. O oh, gracious God, as, As parents, parents are excited and anxious to welcome their children, children so, so you are, are always excited and anxious to welcome us. Help us walk in faith of your welcoming love for us. Help us show such welcoming love to others. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Shall we go? The Holy Gospel today comes from Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my share of the property that will belong to me. And so he divided his property between them. And a few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country. And he began to be in need. And so he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would have gladly filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to, and, and to spare? And here I am dying of hunger. I will get up, and I'm going to go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and he went to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and he put his arms around him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive. He is lost and he is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. And he called one of the slaves and asked him what was going on. And he replied, your brother has come. And your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. And then he became angry and refused to go in. And his father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. And yet you never have given me a goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when his son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me. 
and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Well, at this time, I'd invite children for uh, children's time. And we're so glad that you could be here with us. And we have this just marvelous story of a love of a parent for a child. And I hope and I trust that you, you all have a parent that deeply loves you, that you know is just sometimes maybe even over the top in that love with too many hugs and kisses and stuff like that. You know, this story that Jesus told, we call it the parable of the prodigal son has a father like that. It just goes overboard, even when his son had really, really, really messed up, done things that were hurtful and bad. The father still loved the son and hugged and kissed him and welcomed him because he was so glad that they could be together because that's the important thing. And for us, this points at how much God loves us, just like that father, just like a mother who just hugs and kisses and just over the top, almost uncomfortably so, that God is like that for you. Please join me in prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks this day that you are so loving, often over the top. And I pray for your children, for Martin and Zach and Molly and Ben and Aspen and Owen and Zora and Carl Andrew, Sophia, Kyla, Amelia, Kiernan, and Adam, and Benjamin, that these might know your love over the top, uncomfortably so for them this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as Pastor Daniel said, this is our third in the series on this parable called The Prodigal Son. Now, people have argued down through the ages that that's not really the right name for this parable. And I would agree. <laughs> I don't particularly like that name for this parable either. As much as it starts out a lot about the prodigal son, about this wayward younger son, it also has this really important part about the elder son and how he was also wayward. But these two sons are really quite familiar to us. We can very much relate to what they did and understand where they were at. But what is remarkable, of course, is the gracious love of the Father. And so people down through the ages have, have said, maybe we should rename this parable something about the parable of the loving Father, the waiting Father, or something about the Father. Because in this painting by Rembrandt, it's the Father that's remarkable, welcoming, loving sons who have messed up. Well, the two sons then are really kind of in their mess up and they're, you know, symbolic of our own faith journeys and how we mess up with God. Different ways, two major ways that we get off the rails, if you will, in our relationship with God. And they become the backdrop then to show the Father's love. Now, this was all written a long time ago, 2,000 years ago, and it was a time, we, we call it a patriarchal culture, where men were often the only image, or the, the, very rarely an image of God was given that was female. And so we have some of that in this parable, a focus on men once again. But I think if we just kind of twist our heads a little bit today, let's make it, in this first part, let's just do some changing and make it about the parable of the loving mother and her daughter, the wayward daughter. All right, can we run with that a little bit? And so here we have uh, the wayward daughter who demands her stuff up front and goes off and squanders it on wild living in a distant land. How representative is that of our journey here on earth? For God has given us all things. Given us, created everything. The stuff we own all comes from stuff God created. We might have something to do with its final form, but it's all given to us. Our bodies, our minds, our abilities to think, our, 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 our gifts of uh, feeling, and the fact that we're children of God, it's all gifted to us with freedom 
to go do with it as we please. Now, we might not be as dramatic as this daughter who goes and just squanders it all in this long uh, party time. We may not go to that extent. But we all know something of this, don't we? Maybe it's just for an afternoon. Well, I'm going to go do this because I really don't care what other people think, which really means I don't care how it affects other people, which implies I really don't care what God thinks about how I'm going to spend my money here or how I'm going to uh, uh, enforce this policy here and how it affects other people or how I'm going to go breathe in their direction in these days. You know, that whole package of just not really caring how what we do is going to impact and affect others. And I think what happens in a God when we're like that, of course, is God is hurt. We have taken the good gifts given to us and disregarded what God would ha- how God would have us live with those, squandered them in ways that can be hurtful. And what does God do? Resent? No. God watches and waits. Waits for us to come to ourselves. That's what happens to this younger daughter in this case. She comes to herself and she says, you know what? (laughs) This is miserable here. This isn't a great emotion. Oh, I want to go back to my mom. I so miss my mom. This is, oh, I'm miserable here. I think it would be better off if I just went home. Very practical, I think, decision going on here. So she says, well, I'll come up with this thing. I'm going to say I've sinned against you and against God. No longer worthy to be considered your daughter. So just let me be like one of your hired servants. Very practical decision. She heads back. And again, mom's watching and waiting. Mom can't wait for her to come back. And she sees her from afar, which is the sign of this longing, watching, and waiting. You know, in 1 Corinthians 13, I've said this a bunch lately, The remarkable thing is Paul writes about love. And when he gives his first word to define love, he says it's patience. And I think that's true for the love of God as well. It's patient for us, waiting for us to come to ourselves, to wake up and say, hey, it's better off with God. And start heading back from our distant countries. And so the father, in this case, the mother runs out and hugs and kisses all of that kind of over the top, almost too much, uncomfortably so, you know, give me a little room here. But that doesn't matter because it's not about our reaction. It's about the expression of the great love of this mother for her daughter, how much she loves her daughter. She can't help herself. And when the daughter gives her little spiel about, well, I've sinned against you and against God and, 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 you know, I'm no longer worthy to be called your daughter, you know, just treat me like one of your slaves, you know, nothing of that. A daughter would not go barefoot, get sandals on her feet. A daughter would not be in raggy clothes, wrap her in a beautiful new robe. A daughter is, is going to have jewelry, like a ring on her finger. And we're going to go and kill the fatted calf and we're going to party and celebrate for I get back my daughter who was lost and now found, who was dead and now alive. God is like that for us. You know, I think sometimes we try to find our way back to God and wonder if God will have us, don't we? I see people coming to church sometimes, they'll just slip in the back row because, you know, they're not sure how it's going to be. Or maybe they say something like, the roof of the church is going to fall in on me somehow. The roof of the church is not going to fall on you. What you're going to find is God reaching and hugging and kissing and so glad that you make any steps to come back. Hugging and kissing and honoring you and celebrating you. That's our God. Well, the second half of this parable uh, goes back, and I'll go back to the regular masculine imagery here of the, the elder son. And this elder son really has this uh, kind of deserving insider kind of position. He's been there. He's put the work in on the farm. He's slaved away for his father. And uh, he isn't a, you know, he's done good things. He hasn't been immoral and squandered at all after, you know, wild living and prostitutes. He's not that son. He's a righteous and he's deserved it. He's earned his respect. Such a position is really far, far away from God in its own way, in the heart. 
Because if you back up from that, you know, aren't all things gifts? The fact that he's a son of the Father, isn't that just a gift? He didn't deserve to be a son. No one deserves to be a son. It's a gift. The fact that the Father has, again, the Father came out and shared with him, you know, has given him all things. That's all a gift, is it not? It's all a gift. He shared all his property with him. The fact that he can think and work hard are all gifts. And isn't that tr true for you and me as God's children? And I think this can get us as insiders in the church too. Well, I've been at that church for, you know, 20, 30 years. I've, you know, I've given a lot of money. I've, I've attended this. I've worked hard. I've, you know, all these things that we think somehow give us some deserving for before God undermine the fact that it's all a gracious gift to us. That we're here just because God has chosen to make us children. That God loves us not because we work hard, because we're those just children. God just gives us things out of freedom that we don't have to earn any of that, and we haven't earned any of that. In fact, if we've worked hard, isn't it, in the church, if we have worked hard, isn't it because of the Holy Spirit and faith are in our lives? For some reason, gifts given to us. And so that when other people come from the outside and, or other people who are different than us show up, that, you know, it's God's grace for them too. And that we can join in celebrating them being here with us. And in celebrating that, we begin to reappreciate that it is a gift. And we can find our way to just be grateful that everything is from the gracious gift of God. Because that's where we want to get. And so we can join the celebration and we do that as a ministry here, as a, a church here, week after week in Holy Communion, in our Lord's Supper. Because isn't that about the Father sending his son Jesus out to us in love, in gracious love, meeting us where we are at, where we are still far away, and loving us, hugging and kissing us and building us up and helping us return home and begin a journey of faith and life in God. That's God's plan for us. And, and that's so when we, we say this bread and this wine is the body of Jesus broken, no greater love has anyone than this, that they lay down their life for others. And Jesus has laid down his life. It's over the top. It's uncomfortably so that God would go this far for us. And yet it, here it is in this bread and this wine, these gifts, gracious. And we take and we eat and we're part of the party the celebration that we're children of God that what is lost is found not just for us but for all people what was dead in God is now alive in God and we celebrate that these amazing gifts of God graciously given that it's from grace it always will be from grace and love deep and passionate from God for us. So we invite you to join us as you can in taking and eating and being the people who appreciate it and are grateful that grace is there for us. Amen. Our hymn now is uh, Children of the Heavenly Father.
Let us now confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting the Spirit's power, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Oh God, we thank you that you graciously love us, that you wait for us to return, that you long to be with us. Forgive us for not trusting in your gracious love and open arms. Strengthen our trust in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O Holy Spirit, we too easily judge others as not deserving and lesser. We find them not good enough, not hard enough working, and not as wisely knowing as we are. Forgive us our judgment of them. Remind us how our place where, with you, or remind us of our place with you and how it's just a gift and that we too are not deserving. Soften our hearts that we might join with others in the celebration of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh Lord, we again are facing increased demand for medical resources for the coronavirus infections. We ask for your strength, guidance, and protection for our medical and emergency personnel. Encourage them in their work. Help them to get the resources that they need. Guide and inspire medical researchers to find treatments and vaccines. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Send your spirit to encourage and heal all those who are hurting. We especially ask for Scott Allen, Beth Ayan, Brad Bueller, Tom and Sandy George, Elaine Glover, Rich Gayona, Bob Carlson at the death of his sister, Dennis Conroy at the death of his brother-in-law, Sonny Campbell, Jan Tompkins, Alan Brooks, Wanda Wade, Hazel Quint, Rick Rogers, Jeff Sieben, Cassie Schaefer, Kathy Stanley, Eileen Steinkruger, Terry Thompson, D. Yoakum, Laura Gann, Don McKee, all our men and women serving overseas, especially Anthony Calderon, and all others we lift up to you at this time. Grant your comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of abundance, we lift these prayers before you, trusting in your faithfulness. Prepare us now to receive your gifts of mercy and grace through bread and wine, body and blood. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. At this time, we'll begin our communion service. I encourage you to get your, your uh, communion ready, your bread and your wine. During the service, I will, give, I will lift up the bread and say the body of Christ given for you, at which time I encourage you to take the bread and eat it. And then I will hold up the cup and say the blood of Christ shed for you, in which case you'll take the wine or grape juice and drink that. If more than one are watching with you on this screen, then I encourage just one of you to receive when I say those words and then give to the rest around your table. This is the Lord's table. All are welcome. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ 
who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast, and to ransom those in bondage to sin. Holy God, we praise you, for you have brought us this far along the way. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has, has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom. And let the church say amen. 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 We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The table is set. All are welcome. This is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Body of blood of Christ shed for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy.
receive this blessing. Through this meal of grace, may God strengthen your faith and give you life. Amen. 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 Let us pray. O oh God, as a, as mother, a mother comforts her child, child so, so you, you comfort, comfort your, your people, people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. may God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Mother, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.